Here it comes! It worked just like I thought. Perhaps all that waxy yellow buildup has affected your memory, Rat. It was I who masterminded this heist. Oh! Did your dolly give you the idea? As a matter of fact, yes. And plush private pudding won't seem so silly once we've divided $40 million worth of military supplies. <laughs> Chill. You two'd still be pulling small-time capers if it wasn't for powder. Whatever. Let's load up and let the good times roll. Oh, I always wanted one of those. <laughs> Rat, Hypnado, all together now. It's back, back to, to prison, prison for, for the, the two, two of, of you. you. Don't you have other global criminals to chase her? Do you just enjoy picking on me? How did you know we were here? Simple. I put word out on the street. Are you what? You sabotaged your own crime? No, no. This was not the crime. This was the bait. This is the crime. Pounder! Fire. Let's get him. You may have to go this one alone. Silverstone, the ultimate action hero. Top agent for a secret organization. Saving the world one mission at a time. At least that's who I play on TV. In real life, I'm Jet Jackson. Being a TV star is cool, but being a regular kid is even better. So I had the show moved back to my hometown, Willstead, North Carolina. Now, I can hang with my friends, which is great. And <laughs> the best part of all, I get to spend a lot more time with my family. I'm just trying to live my life as a normal kid. But some people still see me as the famous Jet Jackson. I can't believe I wasn't there. I mean, you shouldn't have... Hawkins, even... there was nothing you could have done. Your assignment in Paris was far more urgent. We don't know what was in that dot. Let's not jump to conclusions. I feel quite fine, I assure you. In fact, I'm quite You'll eager do nothing to... of the sort, Artemis. Hawk, Silverstone? Dr. Rose? So, what have you done to yourself this time? It's just a scratch, Maggie. Is he gonna be all right? What, this old goat? I feel sorry for any foreign substance that's entered his bloodstream. And Artemis, stop harassing my staff. Don't look so concerned, my friends. I have an amazing immune system. I've never even had the chicken pox. You awake? Have you ever tried sleeping on one of these beds? <laughs> of course I'm awake. What is it, Maggie? It's the blood work. I've never seen anything like it, Artemis. The molecular bodies are constantly changing, and I can't seem to isolate long enough to create an antitoxin. Which means? Which means... Which means I'm not gonna get any sleep until I find out what's in there. And I will find out what's in there. I know you will. Get some sleep. Thank you. Jed, hey, I need your opinion. Me as a redhead, me as a brunette. Red. Red? Really? I was thinking more brunette. And why'd you ask? Because I wanted your opinion. And I gave it to you. Look, here, I'll show you. Give me this. Yes. Jet! Just the person I wanted to... That is you, Jet. Yeah, man, I was just showing Riley how she'd look as a brunette. It isn't you. No. Here, try the red. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Ah? Uh... Jet! No. My cousin's in from New York, and... I was... was wondering if I could show him around. You know what, Nigel, I'd love to, but I got a lot of things on my mind. Oh, my. Ah. Uh, 
Tara Essex. This is Riley Grant. Hi. Hi. And this, this is the famous Jet Jackson. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, you're Jet Jackson. Well, Nigel's tell me a lot about you. But I never expected you to be so redheaded. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you're wondering why I called you here. Uh, I hope it's not going to be one of those birds and the bees talks. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, no. I called you here because I want you to know how you came to be at Mission Omega Matrix. How you came to me. It was 15 years ago. I was a junior agent with the organization. My intelligence unit was closing in on a man named Martin Abel, the most dangerous criminal mind of that era. I had personally tracked him to his hideout and was about to capture him when he did the unthinkable. He used a civilian target as a decoy. He targeted a missile at an innocent vehicle. We had to investigate. He knew that and used that distraction to make his escape. Contamination level zero. As agents arrived on the scene, we could only pray that the missile had missed. I am, and you don't watch television. Brought to the brain. Let's see. You actually moved out of Los Angeles because you prefer living in a small town. People are much friendlier. You like living in a crowded, noisy, big city. Yep, has lots of energy. Let's see. You like to eat fresh farm food. Mm, my body is my temple. You like to eat double cheeseburgers, greasy fries, and shakes. Every chance I get. Mm. So you like competitive sports? Like them. I love them. <laughs> you like what? Yoga? Well, it helps me get in touch with me. Ah. So your birth sign says that you're very stubborn. I am not. Yours makes you agreeable. I agree. We are very incompatible. Totally. I'm surprised we found anything to talk about. Aw. Oh, well, uh... Hey, Jet. Are you OK? Oh, uh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just... OK. Now I've got you and you have no place to run. Time out, time out. This is my best friend, JB. This is Tara Essex. Hi, JB. Time in. Ah. ah, see, I got you. See, that's one thing you have to remember about me, Jet. Once I set my mind to something, I get it. Hi, Tara. <laughs> nice to meet you. But don't hit me. <laughs> you got here just in time. I'm just finishing up. The movie begins at 5. Oh, man. Um, I forgot about the movie. Look, I, I think I'm going to have to pass on this one. I promised Tara I'd show her the bluffs in Eagle Rock. Oh, no, that's OK if you guys already have plans. I mean, we can do it another day. It's not like I'm leaving tomorrow. You know, I don't even know when you are leaving. Well, it's supposed to be in a couple of weeks, because school let out for summer. But if I like it here. You'll like it here. Uh, excuse me. This is all very interesting, but the movie? Why doesn't Tara just come with us? Man, I'm sure that Tara would rather spend a day in major than watching some teenage serialized slice and dice horror film. You mean Don't Look in the Trunk Part 9? Ronald's Revenge? You got it. Oh, yes. You actually want to see that? Yes. I like her, Jet. Hey. Sorry I'm late. I was into my mural when I saw the time, and then I didn't have time to... 
Hi. Hi. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, Tara, this is Kayla, and Kayla, this is Tara. Hi. I said that already, didn't I? Uh, Kayla, Tara's going to the movie with us. Oh, great. So let's go. Yeah, and over there in that corner, we used to set up our lemonade stand, you know? And then I'd go over to JB's store and get some cans of juice. <laughs> water it down so much you couldn't even tell it was lemonade anymore. Yeah, man. And then we'd sell it for it. You think this is gonna be a problem? What's gonna be a problem? Well, you, you know, you being Nigel's cousin and... Well, then there's this thing that seems to be happening between us. <laughs> Am I saying something I shouldn't be saying? No. You're saying the right thing. My dream vacation. Ah, uh, an island. An island so remote it doesn't even have a name. <laughs> And I'm the only person on it. OK, well, maybe there is someone else on it. Well, that's a person that I know that's very, very pretty. Me? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that sounds like fun. Hey, did I ever tell you I wanted to be a veterinarian? Yeah, I have, like, this nine-year plan, right? And when I go... Well, you know, I dated a little something. <laughs> yeah, but to tell the truth, I just... Not that much time between work and school. But you know what? I don't think the right girl has really come along. Yeah. And then, like, my grandfather died. I thought that I would never have anyone I could ever really talk to anymore. Yeah. Right, I, I totally agree. I mean, we live in a sheltered society. If, if people knew the magnitude of the hunger and, and suffering in the world, <laughs> We'd have to completely reevaluate our priorities. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right. But what if our entire existence was actually just a dream of a superior being? Exactly. But then what happens to all of us when that being wakes up? Right, right. Man, I can't believe we've been talking for over three hours. Yeah, I have to get some sleep. So, will I see you tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, and I got a lot of things to do. Yes! <laughs> of course I'll see you tomorrow. I don't even want to get off the phone with you right now. Me either. OK, how about this? I'm going to lay my phone down on my pillow, and you do the same, and we can wake each other up in the morning. Jackson. <laughs> Good night. Good morning, everyone. Na 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 na. Oh. 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 You are a beautiful woman. Yes, you are. <laughs> Dad, Dad. Boy, don't you even think about that with me. Dad, man, come on. I'm just trying to show you that I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Hello. Oh, hey, Spencer. You did? It was? Well, it seemed to be working <laughs> fine right now. Yeah. All right, I'll be there in a bit. That was Deputy Spencer. Seen the water main broke through the station, flooded the cell. Spencer said he tried to call here, but the line was busy all night. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Dad. That was me. Uh, Tara and I got this crazy idea that we leave the phone off the hook so if one of us woke up, we could hear the other breathing. It didn't sound as corny last night. <laughs> anyway, I got to run, man. I'm meeting somebody for breakfast. Now, come on. <laughs> Tara? Tara? He's got it bad. 
Mm-hmm. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate. Still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. Excellent choice, Kayla. Thank you for sharing Longfellow's A Psalm of Life with us. All right, any more volunteers to bear their souls in front of their classmates for the recitation of their favorite poem? <clears throat> I'll go. The floor is yours, Miss Jackson. Uh, I prepared a poem by Maya Angelou. It was my favorite poem until today. It wasn't like this yesterday, by Jet Jackson. A poet with whose work I am unfamiliar. Uh, please, proceed. No, it wasn't like this yesterday. The sky was pale and gray. The wind was cold and flowers slept and music was far away. It wasn't like this yesterday. My dreams were kept at bay. Today I found, to my surprise, the sky in azure blue. The wind was warm, flowers abound, and music, loud and true. No, it wasn't like this yesterday. Yesterday, there wasn't you. Thanks for letting me try out my scar makeup on you, dude. Want to test it before we went to camera. No problem, Cub. But now, I'm done for the day, and it's time to play. <laughs> I'm worried about you, JJ. You've been speaking in rhymes all day. Hey, baby, what can I say? I'm just feeling good, like I knew that I would. <laughs> Guess who? Uh, JB? No. <laughs> Chilling, man. How you doing? You know, I might have a problem seeing a guy who spends more time in front of a makeup mirror than I do. Ah, well, uh, well, there's a perfectly logical uh, explanation uh -huh. for that. See, uh, <laughs> um, I had, to, I had to maintain my image. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Uh, oh, no, that's okay. We were just playing around. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Uh, so, you ready to go, Jet? Go? Go where? It's Saturday. The swimming hole? <laughs> JV's waiting for us at the store. Oh, man, I uh, forgot about that. Uh, I promised Tara we'd hang out. Oh, no, that's OK, if you have other things to do. Well, we've been going to the quarry every Saturday for a few months now. Um, well, why doesn't Tara come with us? Uh, sure. Why not? That's OK, why don't you guys just go without me? OK, <laughs> let's go, Dad. Uh, you know what? Um. I think I'm going to pass on this one. I don't really feel like swimming today. Oh. Uh, OK. Sure. I'll, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Can you show the rest of me? I mean, you ain't got no skills. Oh, OK. Oh, oh, don't get yourself dry. Don't get dry. Ah! <laughs> My friend, I know this is a lot to process. No. Tell me more. I did a DNA scan and used all of Mom's resources to find a relative. But you had none. So I took you in and found your name. Silverstone. Sage Lee, second in command, was kind enough to let me continue working in spite of, shall we say, less than conventional circumstances. Time passed. It wasn't always easy having you around, but it was always an adventure. And you do know how I love an adventure. You grew. You changed, but... Some things did not.
I challenged you to be the best that you could be. I taught you all I knew. years, these images, the memories I've had, not knowing where they came from, uh, if they were real. I... Your path in life has been an unusual one, my young friend. I've done the best I knew how. <clears throat> Good morning, Maggie. Silverstone, can I have a moment alone with Artemis? I'm not leaving. <laughs> you try getting him out. All right. Our tests showed that the dart, which Devin Kane had pounder fire at you, contained a parasitic strain of cells. A virus whose speed and ability to change its molecular makeup make it impossible to battle. What does that mean? In plain words, the healthy cells in Artemis's blood are being overtaken and altered into the same parasitic strain that's attacking them. Well, stop it. <laughs> she can't, Silverstone. This poison was created for one purpose and one purpose only, the destruction of human life. And if it gets loose into the main populace, no one will be safe. What about Artemis? What about him? How long, Maggie? I haven't given up Artemis. I haven't. How long? Artemis will be dead in 24 hours. <laughs> 